So, in order to understand how the Z modeler works, we're going to break this series down into actions and targets. Actions are what happens when you click. Targets are where those actions get applied. For example, if action is set to bevel and target is set to single poly, when we left click, it will only bevel that single polygon. But if you change target to all polygons, then it will apply a bevel to every polygon. That's all the target is. If you change target again to front face and all, then only the polygons that are facing the camera will be affected. All polygons. It literally just applies whatever action you picked to every available face on your object. So if your action is mask, it's gonna mask everything. If your action is crease, it's gonna crease everything. If you have creases on your object already and you want to remove them, but you just don't want to spend time manually finding them, just set action to uncrease all polygons, and it will uncrease everything automatically in no time. All quads. When target is set to quads, that just means your actions will only be applied to polygons with four edges. If you're beveling, only the quads get beveled. If you're creasing, only the quads get creased. All triangles. It's really the exact same as all quads, except for triangles. Any action you set is only going to affect faces with three sides. So with masking, creasing, beveling, Q-mesh, you name it. Anytime you want to target triangles, this is what you use. Behind. Basically, when target is set to behind, it will only apply the action to things that are behind the face that you have selected. So if we click here, it will affect everything because everything is behind this face. But if we click over here, you will notice that it only affects the faces behind the face that I clicked. So the faces that were in front of it aren't going to get affected. And it depends on the orientation of the face you clicked, not the camera. So if we click here, it'll affect these but if we click there it'll affect those so if you want to tell zbrush hey only mask the points behind this face just do it like this then bam you're done behind and polygroup this is exactly the same thing as behind except instead of applying the actions to everything that is behind the face you start with it only applies actions to things behind the face you start with that are also the same color as the polygroup you start with so here you can see I'm clicking on the pink polygroup so only the stuff behind that is also a pink polygroup is going to be affected that's all it means It's the same thing with the addition of a polygroup color filter so same thing if we have a green polygroup here and here and here here, and target is set to behind and polygroup if we left click here even though all these are the same color green polygroup it only applies the action to the ones that are also behind so that's how that works brush radius this one's real simple it just means it'll apply whatever action you picked to whatever area your brush is over you can see how big the radius is with the red circle so if we increase the radius that's where the actions get applied if we shrink the radius the actions will only be applied to that smaller area curved island if you click on a face that is in the middle of a surface it's gonna act just like you were targeting a single poly but if you click on a face next to an edge it will apply the action to all faces touching that edge so this is what it looks like in the middle of a surface this is what it looks like when you apply it to something on the edge facing front all this literally just means anything that is facing the camera so if you have a two-sided object and the camera can see one side of it it's gonna apply the actions to only the faces the camera can see this is really good if you ever want to just mask something that is facing you but you don't want to mask the faces on the other side and you want to do it in a single click facing front island this is the exact same thing as face in front all except it only applies to faces that are attached to the object you left click you see how this top part is not connected to the main object? That is because it is separate, which ZBrush considers to be an island. So even though it has faces that are facing the camera, it's not part of the island that I clicked on. So nothing's going to happen to it. Conversely, if we left click on the island, all the faces on the front of it will have actions applied. But since it's not connected to the big one, nothing is going to happen down there. Flat and polygroup. This just means that it will apply the action to every face that is the same color and angle as the one that you left click. So if we go to this this side you see a blue polygroup if we left click anywhere here every face that is both blue and facing the same angle as the one I clicked is going to be affected and the polygroups don't have to be touching each other if we go over here to this green side you see we have a green area here and one green polygon up here and even though they're not connected once we pick one and left click you'll see all of them be affected and that is because they are both green and they are both facing the exact same angle flat border 
Anytime you have a flat surface and you want to apply some type of action to the border of that face, this is the target to use. So if we click on this face, the actions only get applied to the border. Same with this face, and this face, and this face. It's a little easier to see what it's trying to do if you set your action to mask, but basically, yeah, that's what it does. Flat inner. It is literally just the opposite of flat border. If you click on a flat surface, it'll apply the action to everything except the border. Doesn't care about poly groups, just the face angles. Here's what it looks like with bevel. Here's what it looks like with mask. Flat island. This just applies actions to every face that is both connected and oriented in the same direction as the one you clicked. It's like if flat inner and flat outer were on at the same time. And it does not care about poly groups. You'll see here, even with a bunch of different poly groups, it only cares about face orientation and if they're connected. In front. This is literally the opposite of behind. So this just applies whatever action you picked to every face that is in front of the direction of the polygon you click. So if we click here, it's gonna get this whole side. If we click here, it's gonna affect all the faces that are in front of this face. Here, all the faces in front of it will get selected in front and poly group. This is the exact same thing as in front with an additional poly group constraint. So it'll apply an action to everything in front of the polygon you click that is the same color as the poly group you clicked. So if we start with blue, the only faces that are in front of this one that are also blue are gonna be activated. If we click on this face here, even though it's not connected, all the faces that are the same color are gonna be activated. So just remember, everything that is the same color and in front of the direction the polygon is facing are are gonna have the action applied. Island. This just means it'll apply actions to every face that is attached to the object that you clicked. So here you see we have two separate objects. There's a small object floating on the top and the main body at the bottom. Because they're separated, they're treated as two different islands. So if I left click the bottom, that's where the actions get applied. If I left click the top, then that is where the actions get applied instead. Poly corners. This just applies actions to the corners of whatever polygon you click. Poly group all. This just applies your action to every polygon that is the same color as the one you left click. No matter the angle, no matter the island, no matter front or back or edge or inner, any poly group that is the same color is gonna get affected. That's all it means. Poly group border. This just applies your action to the outside of any poly group you left click. They don't have to be facing the same angle. As long as the colors are connected, this target will work. Polygroup inner. This is literally the opposite of polygroup border. If there's a polygroup and you left click on it, it will only apply your action to the inside of that polygroup. And it's not going to care about angles, only if the faces are connected. Polygroup island. This is a combination of polygroup inner with polygroup border. So when you left click on a polygon, every face that is the same color is going to be affected by your action. And remember, they have to be connected. Just because they're close or on the same side doesn't mean they're connected. They have to be touching each other to be considered part of the same island. Poly loop. Poly loop is just a string of connected polygons. So if we have action set to extrude and target is set to poly loops, when you hover your mouse over a face, you will notice that there will be a little line that points in a direction. If you left click, it will apply your action to whatever poly loop is in that direction. So you can see the line pointing to the side here. So that means it's going to apply the action horizontally. Likewise, if you see the line pointing up, if we left click now, it's going to apply the action vertically instead. So that's what poly loops are. Poly loop and flat. This is the exact same thing as normal poly loops, but instead of going all the way around, your actions only get applied on the flat side that you start with. So here's normal poly loop, and here is flat poly loop. Poly loop and poly group. This is the exact same thing as poly loop with a poly group constraint. So it's going to apply your action to a poly loop, but only to faces that are the same color as the one you click. So you can see here we have a cube. It's got two red faces and two green faces. So if we left click on red, it's going to extrude a loop, but the loop stops when there's no more red faces. Same thing if we go to the green side. If we left click, it's going to extrude a loop, but only as long as there are green faces. So, you know what targets do, but you still don't understand actions. Not a problem. Actions come in three types, points, edges, and faces. Which type of action you can select depends on where your mouse is hovering when you right click. If you right click over a point, you will see the point actions. If you right click over an edge, you will see the edge actions. And if you right click over a face, you will see the face actions. For now, we're just going to be working with the point actions. And the first one is bridge. Now bridge can have two targets. When target is set to two points, you'll be able to connect any two points 
you click on. Click once, click twice, and it'll automatically connect them. If target is set to ring though, by default it will turn all the polygroups around the point you click into their own polygroup and crease the edges that surround it. If you change this to not crease, the edges will not be creased. And if you do not regroup, it will not create a new polygroup around your point. If action is set to crease and target is set to point, it will crease all the edges connected to that point. If target is set to shortest path, you can left click different points and it will automatically try and connect from the last point you clicked. You can also hold down left click and drag, which works really well for long straight edges. When point actions is set to delete and your mouse is hovering over a point, if you left click, it will delete that point. So you have absolutely no clue why there's an option to do nothing. Not a problem. This confused me a lot when I started too. But doing nothing is actually quite useful. Remember, all three modes for face edges and points are on at the same time. So let's say at the moment you're just trying to change the polygroup colors of a bunch of faces one at a time. And you're trying to work fast, but sometimes you accidentally click on an edge or you accidentally click on a point and you end up doing things you really didn't want to. Well, this is an ideal situation which you would want to set points and edges to do nothing. If you set points and edges to do nothing, you'll never accidentally click them. That's what this option is for. So you don't accidentally click points and do something you don't want to. Point extrude just means that if you left click on a point, it will create a new point coming from the one you clicked. If you hold control when you do this, instead of extruding a new point, it's just going to drag the one you selected. If you extrude and press alt, you'll be able to change the color of the polygroup for the new faces that are generated. Make curve allows you to left click points in order to draw curves. Every time you press the space bar, you will reset the beginning of the curve and be able to start drawing new ones. Now once you have a curve, you can do all the normal curve things like apply a chain or a tube or a tail or all the usual. But you can also right click on the curve, you can decide what happens if you left click the curve, you can choose from doing nothing, delete the curve, or make a bevel. The rows modifier determines how many segments emerge from the bevel, it defaults to single, but you can also choose between two, four, and eight segments. This area here determines the pattern of segmentation, linear means a segment is divided equally, sharp pushes most of the segments towards the edges, and soft pushes most of the segments to the middle. And if you want a custom distance, you can decide that here. If point actions is set to mask, when your mouse is hovering over a point and you left click, it will mask that point. This is basically just an easy way to manually pick what points you mask and what points you don't. And as usual, if you hold alt, it will unmask instead. When point action is set to move, it lets you move clusters of points by left clicking. By default, it is set to brush by radius, which just means it will move the points within the red circle of your brush size. While holding left click, if you hold shift, it will slide your points along the surface of the object. And if you hold alt, it will move your selection forward forwards and backwards. Now you can mess with these modifiers down here if you want on your own time, but honestly I have never needed to adjust these values. If you set it to infinite x, it will control all the points horizontally to what you click, and if you set it to infinite y, it will do the same thing but vertically. Normally it will only move the points on the same face that you click, but if you move brush to infinite depth, it will grab all the points that are directly behind the object, and if you want to do the same thing but with the same size as your brush radius, set it to xyz instead. If you only want to grab most of the points behind the direction that the point you clicked is facing, then you should try setting mode to infinite Z. Q mesh is a mix between extrude and merge points. So if you hover your mouse over a face, that face is going to glow. Then if you get close to a point and you left click, you'll be able to extrude that point in and out. Now the cool part is when you do the same thing, but to a point right next to it. If two points get close enough, then they will automatically merge together and create a complete piece of solid geometry. That's really all this does. It's super useful. And the modifiers down here, just control the snap distance required before snapping together. The lower the value, the earlier the points start to snap together. Slice points lets you cut into the mesh by left clicking a point. Every time you click a point it will create a new slice from the last point. If you want more control you can always drag click until you're happy. Normally it defaults to crease in a slice, but if you don't want to crease just change the modifiers to uncrease and it will do the exact same thing without the creases. The slide point action defaults to brush radius. If you left click it will grab all the points inside the red circle and move them along the surface of the model. Normally it will try to keep the point on the edge it's sliding, but if you hold shift you'll be able to stop snapping to the edges that you drag. If you hold alt while clicking it will move the points forwards and backwards. Under modifiers you can change the settings, infinite x drags all the points horizontal to the one that you click, and infinite y does the same thing but vertically. Infinite depth just means it will grab all the points even through the object on the back side. Infinite xyz does the same thing but with the full brush size, and infinite z is similar but only for the z axis. The split action will let you expand a circle from the point. If you tap alt, you can change the color of the new polygroup. Normally it will default 
to quads, but if you triangulate the center, instead of quads, it's gonna use tries. If you don't like the crease on the outside, you can change it to do not crease here, and if you don't want it to make a new poly group, you can tell it not to make a new group like this. If you set mode do ring instead, it'll make a much smoother circle, and unlike the point, if you do it on an edge, it will change the shape of the object to match itself. And just like the other mode, you can take the creases off with this and decide whether or not to regroup the different colors of the poly groups. And if you don't want the edges to have equal distances from the center, you can turn that off here. So here's what it looks like without equalize, and here's what it looks like with it. This is a really easy way to just make circular extrusions or intrusions in a hard surface shape. The stitch action lets you left click one point to another. By default it sets to end, which means when you left click two points together, it'll merge both to the second point. Every time you press the space bar, you will reset and be able to start new ones. If you change modifiers to mid, then both points will meet at the middle. And if you set it to start, then both points will meet at the first point. Point transpose just allows you to left click on a point and it will automatically mask everything except that point and activate the gizmo, which you can then use all the usual gizmo controls on. If you hold alt before you left click the point though, then instead it's gonna mask everything except the point and you'll move everything else instead. So you don't understand adding curves, not a problem. Add to curve lets you add curves to an edge by left clicking. But unlike doing this with point action, edge action curves for some reason aren't really connected. So you cannot do your normal curve stuff like chains and tubes with them. But what it can do really well is bevel. If you right click on a curve, you will get the exact same options that you saw in point actions. And they work exactly the same way. You can choose from doing nothing, delete the curve, or make a bevel. The rows modifier determines how many segments emerge from the bevel, it defaults to single but you can also choose between two four and eight segments this area here determines the pattern of segmentation linear means a segment is divided equally sharp pushes most of the segments towards the edges and soft pushes most of the segments to the middle and if you want a custom distance you can decide that here edge align allows you to make a clean cut from one edge to another if you left click this edge and left click on this one you'll see it flattens everything in between if you ever need to reset the first point just press space bar as usual normally you would use this on the edges that are closest to the corner, but you can technically do it from farther away. Just keep in mind that the walls might not follow the edges. While left click dragging, you can expand the alignment outwards, and the shape of the expansion is determined by the buttons here, and the direction of the expansion is controlled under the modifiers here. For now, let's just worry about the shape. The easiest one to understand is the straight line. If we click and drag it out, you can see that it tries to expand in the shape of a straight line, as opposed to a circle which expands in a much rounder shape. In order, here is what they all look like. Bezier curve, arcs, small round corners, spline, arcs and line, tight round corners, circle, round corners, and straight lines. Now at the bottom you get to change the direction the expansion happens, so just for reference, this is what it looks like by normal default. Usually you can just left click drag to control the expansion, but if you would rather it automatically snap to a specific amount, you can set that here. Now when you left click it will not be able to drag and adjust. It will jump to the set amount that you picked over here. Instead it will just jump to the amount you set when you left click. If you activate a line to target, instead of expanding out, it will expand towards the area it intersects. If you turn on additive area, it will collapse in on itself towards the middle and make a capital B. And constant width just tries to keep the space in between each segment as equal as possible. Edge bevel simply turns the edge loop you click on into a beveled area. Edge loop complete means it will follow the edge loop all the way around the object completely. Edge loop partial means it will bevel everything until it reaches the point that is not connected to four edges. So if we click here you can see that every point is connected to four edges so it goes all the way around. But if we click here, these points right here only have three edges connected to them, so that is where it stops the bevel. Poly loop is very similar to edge loop complete, but instead of beveling the edge you click on, it bevels the edge perpendicular to the one you click on. All the other bevel options are the same as usual, the number of segments you want each bevel to have is controlled here. You can have one row, two rows, four rows, or eight rows. Linear edge means the space between each segment is equal. Sharp edges move most of the segments towards the edge, which can be better seen in subdivision. And soft edges have most of the segments towards the middle, which again can be easier to see in subdivision. And last, you can set a custom segment distance if you want over here. Edge bridge is an amazing tool that fills in the space between edges. If target is set to edge and you left click two different edges, it will close them off with a face. As usual, the space bar is used to reset the first edge. But the fun starts when target is set to two 
holes. This tool can connect just about any two holes you give it. If you left click one of the edges, then left click drag the second edge. Moving the mouse left and right will raise the bridge, and moving the mouse up and down will increase the number of edge loops in between. You can do it with two holes that are on the same row, two holes that are in different rows, and even two holes that are in different rows and have completely different shapes. This is an excellent tool whenever you need to connect two different objects together and you don't want to ruin the topology. You can even connect two empty flat shapes together to quickly make things like skirts, blouses, and dresses. Pixelogic, ZBrush, and Danny Mech both have excellent tutorials on how to do that if you want to know more. Links in the description. But here's how this tool works. This area here controls the shape of the bridge. In order, the shapes are spline, arcs and line, tight round corners, circle, round corners, straight lines, arcs, small round corners, and lines. The modifiers at the bottom give you some extra control over the bridge area. Interactive curvature means that you get to drag and decide how tall the connection of the bridge is. Optimal curvature means that ZBrush decides how tall the bridge should be in order to give you the smoothest curve. Half curve means it will set the height of the bridge to half of the optimal. Interactive resolution means that you get to control how many edge loops the bridge has by left click dragging. Optimal resolution means that ZBrush decides how many edge loops you should have to get the smoothest curve. Minimum resolution just means that ZBrush will use as few edge loops as possible in order to connect the two holes. Usually it'll polygroup by normals, but if you want every other loop to be its own colored polygroup, set this to polygroup rows. Polygroup flat means the entire bridge will be a single color. Pivot on hole center means ZBrush will automatically try and curve the bridge around the average of the holes, but if you want to manually change the pivot to center around a specific edge, you can try and do that here. But in my opinion, usually the default gives you the best results. And auto align edges is very similar. The default is usually what you want, but if you want to try and align the bridges based on the edges you click you can try and do that here close bridge if target is set to concave hole and you left click an open edge it will automatically try and fill the empty space but if target is set to convex hole that is when a bunch of options will show up if you left click drag an edge now moving the mouse left and right controls the height and moving the mouse up and down controls how many edge loops it has the shape is controlled here and in order here is what they all look like spline arcs and line Tight round corners, circle, round corners, straight lines, arcs, small round corners, and one line. Now let's take a look at the modifiers. Converge at center means the whole thing closes at a point in the middle. Converge to edge means the peak of the hole is positioned in the middle of the edge you clicked on. And converge to point means the peak of the hole is positioned closest to the point of the edge you clicked on. Interactive curvature means you can left click drag to change the height of the peak. Optimal curvature means ZBrush automatically chooses the height for you, but you can still drag and control the amount of poly loops. And if you want a specific height of the peak, you can control that over here. The higher the value you the higher the peak. Interactive resolution means you can drag click the amount of edge loops you want. If you change it to optimal resolution though, ZBrush will decide the number of edge loops for you. And if you need a specific number of edge loops, let's say for example you set this to 8, that means when you left click it'll create 8 edge loops when closing your hole. 360 twist means as you left click drag it will twist your topology on the way up. And again if you want to twist a specific amount like maybe 180, you can set that here. Polygroup columns means each vertical column will get its own polygroup. Polygroup row means each new horizontal row will get its own polygroup instead. And polygroup flat means it will keep all polygroups the same color. Collapse edge. If you left click an edge, it will collapse the point closest to your mouse to the next point. If you hold left click, you'll be able to switch the direction back and forth. Polyloop does the exact same thing, but instead of collapsing to a single point on the edge, it merges the entire edge loop. And hole will merge an empty loop into a single point. Crease edge. When target is set to edge, it will crease whatever edge you left click. If you pick edge loop complete, it will crease the entire edge loop around the object. Edge loop partial will crease every point on the edge loop as long as the point is connected to four edges. So here you can see that every point here is connected to four edges, which means if we click here, the edge loop will follow the entire loop. But these points right here are only connected to three edges, so that is where the creasing will stop. Poly loop is like edge loop, but instead of creasing the edge loop you click, it will crease the edge loop that is perpendicular to the one you click on. Delete edge. If you left click an edge, it will simply delete that edge. If target is set to edge loop complete, it will remove that entire loop. And if target is set to edge loop partial, it will delete every edge until it reaches a point that's only connected to three edges. Do nothing. 
Set edge to do nothing anytime you don't want to accidentally click on an edge. So if you only want to make adjustments to faces or you only want to make adjustments to points, just set edge mode to do nothing. Edge extrude lets you left click to drag out a new edge. While dragging, if you move edge near another point, it will try and snap together. If you tap shift, it will drag the edge out so that it's flat with the area it started on. And if you tap shift again, it will drag out the edge at an angle that is perpendicular to the one you started. And if you hold control from that point, it will snap that distance to a new edge loop as you drag away. So if you drag out a little, hold control and keep dragging out, it will snap extrude a lot. But if we drag out here, then hold control and keep dragging out, it will snap extrude a lot bigger. Now here you can see that we have a few targets and it's kind of confusing, but here's how they work. It defaults to edge, which just means that when you left click, it drags out a single edge. Edge poly loop means instead of dragging out a single edge, it will drag out an entire side. And poly loop means it will extrude the entire loop. Mesh border pretty much functions the same way as poly loop. Now if you were in standard mode, you can actually switch to edge loop by tapping the alt key. And once you're in edge loop mode, if you hold the alt key, it will activate poly group mode. So normal edge, tap alt for edge loop, and hold alt for poly loop. And if you tap alt again, it goes back to edge. Now if you click edge poly loop, it will flip the order. So if you're dragging out this edge and you tap alt, it will go straight to poly loop mode instead. But if you hold the alt key, now it will activate the edge loop. But again, the standard target is usually the one you want. Also, while you are holding alt, you can do all your normal shift and control options to snap and create new loops if you want. Extend surrounding faces just means the edge goes where your mouse goes. Regular just extrudes things in a direction that has more to do with geometry and math and is a lot harder to control. I do not recommend using it. Remember how we could tap shift to go from free drag, perfectly flat drag, and perpendicular drag? Yeah, well, you can manually pick those here if you want. So free lets you go in any direction, planar means no matter what you do, it will stay flat with the original surface, and perpendicular will be at a 90 degree angle from the original. All right, free sides. This is best understood when you force extrusions to be perfectly flat with the original angles. Free means you can drag your extrusions sideways, but when you set to extend, you will no longer be able to change direction. Parallel is very similar to extend, and taper allows you to change the direction between the two points that get extruded. This is pretty useful when you combine it with edge loop. Single, num, and row signs are what's connected to when you press control. Single means by default it drags out a new single edge. When you set to num row, and if it's set to something like five, it's going to drag out five new segments. And row size just lets you keep dragging out to extend. How often it extends depends on the size here. The smaller the number, the smaller the segments. Generally, I always keep things in free move, but if you want some more snap into surface, you can pick that here. Smart attraction will snap your edge to another edge when it gets close. Normal attraction is a little weaker, and no attraction means it won't snap at all. And from what I've tested, force symmetrical will try and keep things symmetrical when you extrude in multiple edges at the same time, but if you don't really care for that, you can turn that off here. Extrude Edge Faces lets you left click drag a new face in whatever direction you click. Normally it will smooth drag out wherever your mouse is, but you can set it to snap every 15 degrees like this, or you can have a custom amount that you want it to rotate by. For example, if it's set to 45 degrees, you can pick that here, and it'll snap at every 45. Edge Loop Complete will extrude an entire loop. Edge Loop Partial will extrude from every point that is connected to four edges. So down here it will pivot the whole loop, but if we click up here, these two points only have three edges connected, so the loop will stop at these points. Points. Poly loop island will extrude every point that belongs to the edge loop you clicked on that is also the same color. So if we click on blue, you can see that all the blue edges will be extruding. But if we click on green, now only the green edges will be extruded. And when we set to poly loop, you will see, depending on where you click your mouse, a pointer will glow up, down, left, or right. If you left click, it will extrude a new edge loop that is parallel to the direction that the arrow was glowing. So here you can see that it's pointing to the left, so the extrusion will be horizontal. But if the arrow was pointing up, then the extrusion extrusion will be vertical. Extrude move is similar to extrude. If you left click an edge, you can drag a new edge out. If you hold control, you'll be able to start to drag out extra segments. The earlier you hold control, the smaller the segments will be. By default, you'll drag out a single edge, but with edge loop, you'll drag out the whole edge. And with poly loop, you'll drag out the entire loop around the object. This will let you extrude from a single hole in the object, but when you set things to mesh border, it will extrude from every hole in the object. While in default mode, you can access the other modes by tapping and alt, if you left click and tap alt while grabbing an edge, you will switch to edge loop. And if you hold alt from there, you'll switch to poly loop. And poly loop does the exact opposite. If you tap alt while grabbing an edge, it will switch to poly group. And if you hold alt from there, you will switch to edge loop. Single row means you will extrude a single edge when left clicking. If you set num rows to five and then left click, you will drag five segments out instead of one. If you are set to row size, you will expand repeating segments depending on the size that you set. The smaller the number, the more segments you'll get. I've never needed
needed to adjust free to move or force symmetrical, but smart attraction just means the ability to snap to another edge when you get close. If you turn it off, things won't snap together anymore. Insert action lets you left click to create a new edge loop on the edge you click. If you hold shift it will straighten the lines and if you hold alt it will delete the edge loop you click instead. When target is set to multi edge loop and you click on an edge it will create a new loop and if you drag up and down you'll be able to increase the amount of loops. If you want a precise number of new loops like 8, just set it right here. And the next time you left click an edge you will see 8 loops. It defaults to zero specific elevation which means you can't drag left or right to expand, but if you want to be able to expand by dragging, set it to interactive here. Smooth elevation adds curvature to every other loop parallel to the one you click. These options control the shape of the expansion and in order they are spline, radial, linear, and flat. These options control the direction of the expansion. The default is per polygon normal which just expands the whole thing out. But clicked normal expands everything in the direction of the face you clicked. And average normal is just based off math combining each normal in the poly loop you click. Alternate poly group means every other loop is grouped. Same poly group means that all the new groups are the same color. And keep poly group keeps the colors the same for all. Edge inset allows you to insert an edge when you left click. Whatever size you set for your last inset is the size it will automatically apply the next time you left click on a new face. If you tap out while dragging you will change the color of the polygroups. The default target is a single edge. Complete edge loop goes all the way around. Partial edge loop stops when a point is only connected to three edges. And poly loop which works in a direction perpendicular to the one you click. Center and border means you got a new center and a new border. Border means you only get the border. And center means you only get the center. Inset region connects the faces that are connected to the edge you clicked. If you turn it off the faces stay separated. Equidistance means the border is the same size all around, standard has a slightly different border proportion, and legacy won't change the polygroup color of the border. No size limit means you can shrink to whatever size you want, default size limit means it won't let you get smaller than this, and custom size limit allows you to manually set the size to whatever you want. Default equidistant snap just means it will try to keep everything as uniform as possible, and if you ever start to get triangles that you don't want, I've heard if you select custom and kick this up all the way, it might solve your problems, but the default is usually all you need. Edge mask lets you mask an edge by left clicking it. If you hold alt you will unmask the edge instead. Edge loop complete will mask an entire edge loop around the object. Edge loop partial will mask an entire edge loop until it reaches points that are only connected to three edges. And poly loop will mask a loop that is parallel to the edge you clicked. Edge move. Left click an edge to move it. Technically if you hold shift while you move you can move it perfectly along the x, y, or z axis but it's kind of hard to control. But yeah, that's how it works. Move auto radius is like moving one edge loop at a time. If you hold shift you'll be able to slide up and down in perfect directions but the farther away from where you click the weaker the move is gonna be. And if you hold alt it will expand inside and out. Edge loop partial does the exact same thing except as usual if you click on a loop the effect will stop when it reaches a point that is only connected to three edges. Move brush radius just moves edge loops based on the brush size. As usual, left click to move an edge loop, hold shift to slide it perfectly along the surface, and hold alt to expand it inwards and outwards. Edge loop complete targets the entire edge loop around the object. Edge loop partial does the same thing with the exception of trying to avoid any point that is only connected to three edges. And poly loop will affect a poly group loop perpendicular to the edge you click. And again, all of these can be combined with the shift and alt controls. Move brush infinite radius just means it will apply the full weight of the movement to the entire edge loop all around the object. Just the whole loop. Forget the camera, forget the brush radius, just moves the whole thing. As usual, you hold shift to slide across the surface and hold alt to expand inward and outward. Edge loop complete just grabs the whole loop. Edge loop partial does the same thing except when it comes to a point that's only connected to three edges and poly loop grabs the entire loop perpendicular to the edge you clicked. Poly group. If you hold left click and tap alt, you'll be able to change the color of that row. When target is set to overwrite and you left click on an edge, it will turn every face perpendicular to that edge a new color. And it won't care what the old color was, everything is just going to be the same new color. But if you change target to additive, it's going to give every polygon in that loop a new color, but also take into consideration the old color. So basically, if you want to make an entire loop the same color, set it to overwrite. But if you want to make everything a new color and kind of keep the distinction between the 
the old colors, set it to additive. QMesh allows you to left click an edge and drag out new edges. If you drag out multiple edges close together, they will snap to each other. If you hold shift, you'll create a new floating face. If you hold control, you'll simply move the selected face forwards and backwards. And if you tap alt, you'll change the poly group color of your extrusion. Edge targets a single edge. Edge loop complete targets the entire loop around the object. And edge loop partial does the same thing until it reaches a point that's only connected to three edges. Poly group island only targets the edges around a particular color. So if we left click on a face that is colored in blue, only the blue edges will get Q-meshed. Same thing if we click on a green poly group instead. And poly loop applies the Q-mesh to every face that is perpendicular to the edge that you clicked. Full step means when two edges get close to each other, they snap together in a single step. If you change it to half step, and we start to drag this edge close to another, you'll see the snap happens in two parts instead. One, two, one, two. And quarter step just means the snap happens in four parts instead of two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Straighten just means that you can smoothly left click drag your extrusion out. 15 degrees means it will snap every 15 degrees as you drag out. And custom allows you to manually control the pivot rotation. So if it's set to 45, it will snap at every 45 degrees as you drag. And supposedly this affects the strength of fusion detection, but when I change these settings, I honestly don't notice any difference in function. So I recommend just leave it on default. But if you know what it does, let me know in the comments below. Edge scales lets you left click an edge and change its size. If target is set to edge loop, it'll scale the entire loop around the object. If you set it to edge loop partial, it'll do the same as edge loop, but stop when it reaches a point that is only connected to three edges. And poly loop applies the scale to all faces that are perpendicular to the edge you clicked. Edge slice allows you to left click an edge, and if you left click another edge, it will create a slash all the way through. From this point on, every time you left click, it will keep connecting the edges, and of course, you can press space bar to reset the first edge. You can drag select to make a precision slice, as you can tell, every time you slice, it's going to be creased. But if you don't want the crease, just set it to uncrease, and now every time you do the slice, nothing will be creased. Edge slide lets you left click to slide an edge along a surface. If you're on edge, you'll target a single edge. If you're an edge loop, you can target the whole loop around the object. And if you want, you can hold shift in order to move the edge while you slide it. And as usual, edge loop partial is the same as edge loop, but it stops affecting points that are only connected to three edges. Edge spin. Left click on an edge in order to spin it around. This is an easy way to rotate what points the edge is connected to. Edge split lets you left click on an edge and drag a new point that intersects it. If you hold alt, it will merge the closest point to it into a single point. Edge stitch lets you left click on a hold in order to close it. Click your first edge, click your second edge, and ZBrush will do the rest. You can close the same hole in different ways. So depending on the edges you click and in what order, depends on how the hole will be closed. Edge swivel. If target is set to edge loop and you left click on an edge, it will swivel that edge around a pivot. Where the pivot is depends on the face your mouse was hovering over when you left clicked. So if this face is glowing red, then the pivot point will be here. But if this face is glowing red, then the pivot point will be there. It also works for partial edge loops too. So if you click on an edge that has points that are only connected to three edges, it will stop the swivel at those points. And if target is set to single edge, it will look like a normal expand movement control. But that is because it's trying to swivel from two points at the same time. For this target to work properly, you have to click on an edge that is surrounded by open faces. So if we delete a few faces and then click this edge, you will see it swiveling like so. Edge transpose allows you to mask and move things around with the gizmo in one click. Single edge will target the edge you clicked. Edge loop complete will mask everything except the edge loop you clicked. Edge loop partial does the same thing until you reach a point that is only connected to three edges. And poly loop will mask everything except for all the faces that are perpendicular to the edge you clicked. Edge unwell weld lets you separate edges from the object. If target is set to edge and you left click, you'll be able to start cutting out chunks of the object with the edges. If target is set to edge loop, it will separate the whole object by the loop. As usual, edge loop partial does the exact same thing, except if you click an edge that has points that are only connected to three edges, the effect will stop, and poly loop will target the loop that is both perpendicular to the edge you clicked and closest to the point you clicked. So, you don't understand face curves. Not a problem. Add to curve for faces lets you put curves around your target of choice. If you don't know what these targets do, look at my tutorial all Z modeler targets in 9 minutes for the crash course. But just for a few quick examples, a single poly just puts curves around whatever face you click, and Polygroup Island will add curves to any group of faces that are the same color. Once you've added curves, you can do all your normal curve tricks like adding chains, ropes, tubes, and tails. 
And as with all curve actions, if you right click on a curve, you'll get a few extra options that you can do next time you left click on a curve, which include do nothing, delete all curves, or just delete a single curve. And of course the bevel, which comes with the traditional settings of bevel in one row, two rows, four rows, or eight rows. Linea means each segment is equal distant apart. Sharp edges mean most of the edge loops happen around the edges. Soft edges means most of the edge loops appear in the middle. And if you want a custom edge loop pattern, you can change that here. The higher the value, the sharper, the lower the value, the softer. Edge bevel will be applied depending on your target. It includes all the standard options like single row, double rows, four rows, and eight rows. And the distance between each segment is determined here. Linear means they're all equal distant apart, sharp moves most of the segments to the edges, and soft moves most of the segments to the middle. And you can have something custom in between over here. The higher the sharper, the lower the softer. Face bridge with target set to two poly lets you left click two faces together. Left click once, left click twice, and bam, you're connected. If target is set to connected poly, depending on what direction the arrow is pointing on the face you're hovering over, when you left click drag, you will bridge those two faces together. Move the mouse left and right to expand the shape and move up and down to increase the number of segments. The shape of the expansion is determined here and in an order they look like Bezier curve, arcs, small round corners, spline, arcs and line, tight round corners, circle, round corners, and straight lines. Interactive curvature means you can left click drag horizontally to expand the shape. Specified curvature will automatically set the height of the expansion to whatever amount you set here. Interactive resolution means you can left click drag vertically to increase the edge loops in the expansion. If you set specified resolution to something like 8, it will automatically insert 8 edge loops into your shape. Align with tangent means it will shape the curve based on the direction of the faces you click. Align to normal means you'll always get the same default shape no matter what direction the face is oriented. Variable width means when two faces are different sizes, each segment will be allowed to have different sizes. Constant width means it will try its best to make sure that each segment is equal despite the two faces being different sizes. If you want the width of the rows created to be symmetrical, set that here. Otherwise, set it there. Polygroup rows will create new polygroup colors for the expansion. Flat will keep everything that happens in the same polygroup color. Tries and quads mean ZBrush will decide when to use tries and when to use quads for the sides. If you set this to tries only, the sides will always be triangles. And if you set it to quads only, the sides will always be quads. Face crease lets you quickly put creases where you left click. For example, if you have target set to polygroup island, meaning a group of faces that are all the same color, all sides literally just means it will crease every edge connected to that group. Generally, long sides tries to pick all the edges that go horizontal and short sides tries to get all the edges that go vertical, but sometimes it gives weird results, so be careful. All faces means every face that is connected to your target. Polygroup border specifies that only the border of the color group gets targeted. And polygroup inner means everything except the border of the color group gets targeted. All transitions just means it won't distinguish between edges based on their angles. Shallow transitions means any edge that is bent at an angle smaller than this number will not be affected. So if we set this to 100 and left click, this edge will be creased because it has a 90 degree angle which is less than 100. But if we set this to 85, because this is a 90 degree angle, it will not be affected. Sharp is the opposite. It means if we set this to 80, it means that all edges with angles less than 80 degrees will not be affected. All targets just means that every edge that is connected to the group will get creased. Outer targets means only the outer edge of the group will get affected. And inner targets means only the edges not on the borders will get creased. And outer and inner have to do with deleted faces. All sides just set to everything, if you set to outer, only edges bordering a deleted face will be selected. If it's set to inner, only edges that are not bordering a deleted face will be selected. Delete face is really simple. When you left click a face, it's going to delete whatever target you set. If you're on single poly, it'll delete one poly. If you're on front facing, it'll delete the front face. If you're on poly loop, it'll delete that poly loop. If you're on poly group island, it'll delete everything that is the same color. If you're working with edges or points and you don't want to accidentally click a face, just set this to do nothing. Face equalize will try and turn any face into a square. Every time you left click drag, it will keep adjusting the polygon until it gets a square. It's pretty useful whenever you just need a square shaped hole in an object, but the starting topology is super weird. 
Face Extrude lets you left click a face to drag out new topology. If you hold control, you'll detach faces from the surface. If you hold shift, you'll remove in between geometry. And if you tap alt, you'll change the color of the new poly groups. One sided poly is a normal extrusion. No sided poly detaches the surrounding polygons. And step brush means it will create new edge loops as you drag out. And if you want a specific size of edge loop extrusion, you can set that right here. Point one is standard, but if you want more space in between, you can scale it to something bigger. Flip faces. This is equivalent to Blender's flip normals. Just pick your target, click to flip the normals. If you're on single face, it only affects one face. If you're on poly group island, it'll flip everything that's the same color. Face inflate just allows you to left click drag to expand a shape. This function is extremely similar to the inflate brush, but instead it gets applied to whatever target you have. So if we have target set to polygroup island, it's only going to apply inflation to the polygons that are the same color as the face we click. There are three different options. The first one is face normals, which will inflate in the direction the faces are oriented. The next target is edge normal, which extrudes in the direction that the edges are oriented. And the last target is point normal, which extrudes in the direction that the points are oriented. They give you slightly different results. Insert nano measure is a quick way to sprinkle whatever object you want as many times as you want in whatever pattern you want. To obtain a mesh you want to insert, select that subtool, move the camera to a perfect front view, go to Z model or brush, right click a polygon to bring up the menu, and hit to mesh from brush, set target to all polygons, and align mesh to orientation. And when you left click a face on the object, you will see that object appear up here. From here, under Z model, if we go to insert nano mesh and set target to something like single poly, and we left click, it will drag a copy of that object to that face. If you hold shift, it will also drag a copy of that object to every face that is the same color as the face we clicked. And if you want a specific target or pattern, you can hold alt and left click exactly where you want the new objects to appear. Regardless where you want to spawn them, once you've got them on the right side under nano mesh, you'll see a bunch of options. Size controls how big they are. Width is how wide they are. If you want to randomize the width, you can do that here. Length is how tall they are, which again, if you want to randomize, you can do over there. Height is how long an object is, which you can randomize over here. This is a great way to quickly make cityscapes with buildings and stuff. X offset gives the objects a horizontal offset, which as usual can be randomized. Y offset does the same thing but in the vertical direction, and Z does the same thing in the forward direction. If you had different color poly paint on your object, you could assign those colors to control the X, Y, and Z offsets with this. X rotation moves forward, this randomizes it. Y rotation rotates horizontally and is randomized here. And Z rotates like a barrel roll and is randomized with this. You can flip all the objects horizontally with this or flip them vertically with this. H tiles how many you want and stacks horizontally. If you set it to four, there will be four objects in each face. V does the same thing vertically. If you set it to three, there will be three rows of objects stacked up vertically on each face. There are a bunch of preset patterns you can play with over here. You can randomize the distribution with this, and if you really like the distribution but you want to re-roll the seed, you can do that right here. Insert points just means when you left click on a face, it'll create a point right in the middle. If you hold alt, you can left click to plan your targets. When you left click then, it'll insert a point to every single white polygon. Insert poly loops is an easy way to expand and add extra loops by left click dragging on your target area. If target is set to single poly and you left click drag horizontally, you'll expand your target. If you drag vertically, you'll increase the number of edge loops. If you tap alt, you will change the color of the poly group. Interactive splits means it will combine triangles and quads. Even splits means it will never allow triangles. And if you want a specific number of edge loops, you can set that here. Loops mode means it will apply the action horizontally. Grid turns the action into a plus and sunburn will include triangles that come from the center. Alternate poly loops means it will alternate poly groups each edge loop. Same poly loop means every new piece of topology will be the same color. And keep poly group is very similar to same poly loop. Face instead allows you to left click to create incisions on a polygon. If you mess with the size and left click, it will try and keep the size the same as when you last adjust it. If you tap alt, you'll be able to change the color of the new poly groups. And if you hold alt before left click, you can click and drag specific positions you want to apply the inset to. And while holding alt, left click again to remove a selection. Center and border gives you a new center and border. Border just gives you a border. And center only gives you the middle. Inset each poly will apply one action to each face individually. But if you have this set to region, it will apply one action to the entire region. Equidistant tries tries to keep all the edges the same border and size. Standard is more flexible with the border sizes. And legacy only works if you have this set to each poly. No size limit means you can shrink and grow them to any size. Default size limit means they can't get any smaller than this. And if you want to manually set the limit to how small they can be, do that over here. Default snap is usually what you need, but if you find yourself getting some weird triangles, try the custom setting and kicking this all the way up. And if you're lucky, it might get rid of them. 
face mask allows you to mask an area by left clicking it. Depending on your target is where it will mask. If you want to mask specific areas, just hold alt and left click. If you're on all polygons, it masks everything. If you're on poly group island, it only masks faces that are the same color. And if you're on poly loop, it masks the entire edge loop mesh to brush. This just turns whatever you click into a brush. If you are on aligned to orientation, it aligns the mesh based on your camera. If target is set to align to face normal, it aligns the mesh based on the face you click. How you align the mesh determines the default values of your brush. The reason why you want to face the front most of the time is so it will be perfectly flat when you need it to be. If you create a brush when it's not aligned, you're going to have a lot of trouble whenever you need something to be perfectly flat or perfectly straight. Face move allows you to left click on a target and can move it based on the direction the face is oriented. If you hold shift it will slide the target along the surface. But if target is set to align to axis and you hold shift, it will try and slide based on the x, y, and z coordinates. Polygroups allows you to left click on a face and give it a new color. If you left click drag on a face and tap shift you will absorb that color so that the next time you left click you will copy that color to the next target. If you left click drag and tap alt you will cycle through new colors for the polygon and if you hold alt before left clicking you'll be able to plan your targets ahead of time. Override means it will apply the current colors to your target. If we are applying purple it doesn't matter what color the old face was as soon as we click it it's going to be purple. Additive just means the new color of the target will be consistent. Here you can see we have a blue and a purple group. If we override the entire side, there are still only going to be two groups, they just changed colors. Pick existing is the same thing as holding down left click and tap and shift to absorb the color. It just lets you left click the color you want so that when you go back to override, the color will be the same as the one you grabbed. Full coverage means it will only apply the action to the entire target you have set. For example, if we have target set to polygroup island, meaning every face around the one we clicked that is the same color, it will target that entire island. But if we set coverage to random and something like 25% that means only 25% of the island is going to have the color changed. And if you drag left clicked, you'll be able to cycle through new random arrangements. These determine the pattern of the groups that get applied. One group ID means the action will be the same color through the left click. Some of these make a little more sense than others, like three sides means it will try and color the poly group based on a front and back, left and right, and top and bottom. Six sides means that the front, back, left, right, top, and bottom sides get its own color. And checker just means that it alternates colors like a checkerboard. The other ones are very unique and I don't really understand them, but I'll demonstrate them anyway. In order, you have one group ID, topological, relative plus one, three sides, poly order, relative minus one, six sides, point order, and checker. QMesh allows you to extrude faces with left click and when two faces get close to each other they will merge together. If you hold shift it will move the face inward and outward, if you hold control it will detach the face, and if you tap alt it will change the color of the new poly group. And as usual you can hold alt to left click and drag select targets ahead of time. This area here determines how the snapping together occurs. It defaults to a tenth step which means it will take ten small steps until it reaches equal to the face next to it. If you set it to a half it will only take two steps to merge. One. Two. If you set it to a quarter, it'll take four steps instead. One, two, three, four. On full step, it just snaps automatically. Every third takes three steps. One, two, three. And no alignment means that there are no snaps in between. It's just smooth until you get to the end. One-sided poly means new topology has no edge loops. Multi-sided by brush means that when you left click drag, it will create new edge loops. The interval in between each loop depends on the size of your brush. So if you increase the size, then the intervals between each edge loop will be bigger. And if you want a specific size for the interval between each edge loop, you can set that here. The smaller the number, the more edge loops you will have. Now supposedly attraction determines how strong the snap is, but I haven't been able to notice any significant effects when I change these settings, so as far as I can tell, the default is probably the one you want. Normally when extruding a new face and snapping together, it will always try and keep things as quads, but if you enable triangles, then when you start extruding a new face, it will start you off with a triangle. Disable extended snap means that when you snap two faces together, you will not be able to drag past the face you are snapping to. But if you enable extensions, that means you can keep dragging past the point the faces are parallel. Scale lets you left click and change the size of your target. This area down here represents where the origin of the scale takes place. Think of origin like the gizmo. If you move it here, the pivot point becomes over there. If you move it over there instead, then that becomes the new pivot point. Mesh center just puts the pivot in the middle of the mesh. Click center puts the pivot on the face you clicked. So if we click this face, it'll collapse over here. And if we click that face, it collapses around there. Axis center puts the pivot around the world center. If we turn this on, you can see the center is right here. And if we move our object around and then try to scale 
again, it's still gonna try and collapse around this center. Polygon center is one that I don't use much, but I've heard it works really well when your target is set to curved island and you want the origin to be in the middle of the group of polygons that gets affected. Local symmetry means it will set the origin to the center of whatever target you have selected. So if we are on polygroup island, meaning every face that is the same color as the one we clicked, and we click the blue side, the center of the blue group is right here, so that is where it's gonna collapse. If we click on a different color, then it will collapse to the middle of that instead. Set camera perpendicular allows you to left click on a face in order to automatically center the camera perfectly on that face. So when you click on a face, it's gonna try and align itself with that face. If you say do not center, that just means that when you left click on a face, it's gonna make sure that it's oriented in the same direction, but it's not gonna center on it. Slice mesh allows you to left click and slice from one face to another. Every time you click, it's gonna connect the new face to the last face. If you need a specific angle, you can hold down drag, and if you ever need to reset your starting point, just press the space bar. As you can tell, it normally defaults to crease in the slice, but if you don't want to crease, just set it to uncreased here. Sphere Rise lets you turn any mesh into a ball. If you drag click to the left, it will try and make the corners of your mesh into a circle. If you drag click out, it'll try and make the body of your mesh into a circle. But if you hold shift and drag out, it'll do both at the same time. Spin controls are very similar to the scale controls. The origin of the spin is determined over here, and how it spins is controlled over here. No alignment means the rotation is smooth, 15 degrees means it will snap every 15 degrees, and if you want a custom amount of snap like 45 degrees, you can set that right here. Align to axis means the position of the pivot will depend on the world position and not the mesh. Mesh center puts spin origin on the middle of the object. Polygon center puts the spin origin in the middle of whatever face you click. Axis center puts the spin origin in the middle of the world position. Position. Clicked center puts the origin where the mouse was when you left clicked. Local symmetry puts the origin in the middle of your target. So if your target is set to polygroup island, the origin is going to be in the middle of the group of faces that are all the same color as the one you clicked. And clicked polygon corner is like clicked polygon, except it rotates around the corner of the polygon you clicked. Spin edges is a thing that you do with nano mesh. Once you've inserted a nano mesh and you just want to quickly rotate a single target, you can rotate them really quick. Clockwise will rotate them clockwise and counterclockwise will rotate them counterclockwise. Depending on your target, you can do them all together or you can do it one at a time. Split allows you to left click on a polygon and divide it into more topology. This works on quads, it works on tries. As usual, if you hold alt, you can plan your targets ahead of time. And this option works exceptionally well when used in conjunction with the point split action when you want to extrude a shape from a face. Transpose just allows you to left click a target and move it with the gizmo. If target is set to a single face, you'll control the face. If target is set to polygroup island, you will control that island. And if target is set to all, you will control everything. Uncrease is the literal opposite of crease. All sides means it uncreases all types of crease lines in your target. Long sides means it uncreases all the horizontal creases. And short sides means it uncreases all the vertical creases. All faces literally targets all faces of the target. Polygroup border only uncreases the edges that are on the border of the polygroup island. And polygroup inner only uncreases edges that are on the inside of the polygroup island. All transitions mean it won't discriminate creases based on their angles. Shallow means it won't uncrease any edge with an angle greater than this value. So this is a 90 degree angle, which is greater than the value we have set, which is 80. So when we click on the blue polygroup, all the creases except these will disappear. Sharp transition is the opposite. Only angles with a value greater than this number will be uncreased. So if this is set to 70, it means the only creases that are bigger than 70 degrees will be uncreased. And since these edges are 90 degrees, if we left click, they will be the only edges that get uncreased. If target is set to something like flat island, meaning all faces that are parallel to the one we clicked, all targets means every crease inside the target will be uncreased. Outer targets means that only the creases on the edge of the target get uncreased, and inner means every crease except the borders get uncreased. If you have an open hole, all the edges means every crease, regardless of whether it borders the hole or not, get uncreased. If it's set to outer edges, only the creases bordering the hole will get uncreased. If it's set to inner edge, only creases not bordering the hole will get uncreased. Unweld lets you left click a polygroup island and separate it from the rest of the topology. 
Once you've separated it, you can hold Control and Shift and left click to see what it looks like by itself. If you change target to single face, you can do this one face at a time. The Z Modeler modifier is not a function like the others. It affects how the other tools behave. So for example, when you're on something like Q Mesh and you have target set to Flat Island, meaning any face that is facing the same direction as the one you click, the default flatness is 15 degrees, meaning that any face that is bent no more than 15 degrees from the one you click will be included on your action. But if you wanted to change it to something like 30 degrees, that just means that now the next time you click on a flat island, everything that is less than 30 degrees different from the face you clicked will be included. Repeat last tolerance is the required amount of movement to repeat an action on a tablet. And pause repeat is related to the feature where ZBrush remembers the value of your last action. Let's say you are on inset, and this is the perfect border for most of your work. So now when you tap left click it will keep the borders exactly the same each time. But for whatever reason you need to change the size. The problem is after you change the size, if you click now, it's using the new size instead of the old size. Well when you pause repeat that tells ZBrush, hey I don't want you to remember the changes I make to the values when I left click. So that when you turn it back on, it continues from the value before you pause. Hope that helps and as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.